I am Frank. I'm the host of DWP Report, which is a weekly podcast for helping improve your WordPress site. I'm also the founder and developer of Quizlet Survey Master, which is now the highest rated survey plugin on, for WordPress. And then I blog at frankcorso.me, and I'm the lead organizer of WordCamp Jacksonville, which are having our first one next April. So if you're local to that area. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about a variety of different tools. And I've broken this down into four different categories, so we can kind of see where we're at. We're going we're to go into idea generation tools, and then planning tools, creating and editing tools, and then marketing tools. So, idea generation tools. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, so buzzsumo.com is a really cool tool. What you do is essentially you go to this website and you can type in any category or topic you're after, and it'll tell you the most popular articles and posts that are currently trending in that category. So, for example, if I was writing about my bakery, I can go to this website and type in you know, Italian bread or bakery, whatever my target audience is after. And it'll list the top 100 articles going on right now. What is being shared the most? What's being talked about the most? So I can kind of go, hey, these are really cool topics. I'm going to go write about something like this. So none of the pictures are looking like they're coming out today. That's Forgive me for all of our technical issues here. The next one is Google Trends. This one's similar to BuzzSoup, but essentially what you're going to do is seeing what's being searched on on Google. And this is a tool by Google. So you can go and go, hey, Google, what is being searched right now on your search engine? And it'll tell you. So for example, back to our bakery example, you can go to Google and you can go, hey, Google, how many times are people searching for bakery? And I'll tell you, oh, it's it's popular right now, more people are searching for it than last year. Things like this, so you can look at different keywords, different article topics. For example, maybe you're a mechanic and you want to search for, hey, are people searching for cars? Or are they searching for vehicle? What, what's the word they're searching for? You can use this to find the exact words that people are searching for on Google. Okay. And then next is the HubSpot topic generator. This one's not as awesome as the Google and BuzzSumo, but essentially you go to this, and what it does is you can enter in a topic that you're after, and you can enter a few details about it, and it'll generate a couple fake headlines for you. So if you're going, if I'm running a bakery, I can go here and type in maybe Italian loaf and a few words to go with it, and it'll generate a few headlines for you. And you can go, hey, that's a cool one, that might, I might go to do something with it. Now remember, this is randomly generated, so some of the headlines you come across might make no sense whatsoever. But it should give you five to ten different headlines, and maybe one or two of those might spark something of yours and be like, oh, hey, I can turn that. I like that headline. I might need to tweak it a little, but I can use it for something. So I like to use that one quite a bit just to kind of get some random headlines going. And then this next one is very similar. It's the Portent Idea Generator. Same concept, except it takes a few different other words. What if I can lift this up a bit higher? Let's see. Ooh. I do have all these. I'm going to make it easy, even easier for you. I have a nice little PDF that has all of these in it that I can share with you at the end. So you don't have to worry about trying to write them all down. It would have been great if these images were loading because then you could see all the home pages. That would have been amazing. But unfortunately, I'm sorry they are not. So inbound.org. This one's a similar one to some of the other ones, but it actually shows you what ones people are uploading. So for example, we can go here. And this one, so I go and it lists about 20, 30 articles on this next page, next page. And these are articles that people are sharing, and then they get to their uploading on the site. So you can see, hey, what is the most uploaded articles? So usually, I think this is the last one of the idea generation, but usually when I'm going for ideas, I'm trying to figure out what do I want to write about today, I'll go to BuzzSumo and then Google Trends to kind of get the key words that I'm after. What are, what are people looking for right now? And then I'll use the HubSpot topic generator inbound to kind of go get more specific with exact headlines and exact stories to write about. Does that make sense? How I would use those together? Now 
Now, with Reddit, some of you might be familiar with Reddit, and you might not think about it when you're thinking about, I'm going to write an article. But what Reddit is, for those who don't know what Reddit is, it's essentially a massive community with lots of subcategories. It's not the most friendly of communities, and some of their topics can get a little inappropriate. But what I like about it is that there's subcategories <coughs> for everything. There's a subcategory on nutrition, there's a subcategory on business, there's a subcategory on bakery owners, like almost anything you can think of. And those people are actually in there asking questions and sharing posts. So when I'm trying to figure out what to write about for like my business website, I'll go to the subreddit of business and I'll see what people are asking about and I'll be like, hey, I can answer this question in a blog post. So I'll create this blog post and then I'll post back and write, hey, I have a blog post that I just happened to write about that this would answer your question. And then it's out there on the internet so anyone else searching for it in Google, they're going to come across this question and they'll see my answer which links to my blog post. So that's, I use that strategy. Again, Reddit's not the most appropriate, so it's not something I would spend hours in or get side I'll find a subreddit that applies to you, kind of stay with that one unless you know a little bit more about Reddit. But that's how I use it. So once you have an idea, once you have your topic, you have your keywords, you have your various concepts, then we're going to start planning some of these out. The tool I love to use to start planning, some of you may be familiar with, it's called Evernote. And essentially, it's a tool that lets you capture notes on a variety of devices from a variety of services. So this can be on your phone, your desktop, your laptop, wherever it is. And essentially, it's almost like sticky pads that you can order notes, like digitally. So you can go in and say, oh, hey, I have all these cool ideas. You can put links in it from websites and save pictures. Kind of organize your ideas into this sticky pad-like interface using the service. So usually, how I use this when I'm starting the plan, I'll create like a label or like a notebook, essentially like, oh, this is for this website. And then I have all my little notes, like, oh, hey, I would love to write on this. And then, and then as I find ideas across the internet, I add to that little note, oh, this was a cool website that I might go to incorporate, this was a cool picture. I kind of add from a variety of services, and then at the, when I go to write it, I have all these pictures and links and sources that I can look back at. Now, a competitor to Evernote is Google Keep. If you love the Google ecosystem, this is their competitor at Evernote. It's not as powerful, but I think the search capabilities from Google is a little bit better. So again, it's not as powerful as Evernote, but if you already have a Google account, you don't have to create a Google account, you don't have to do all this extra stuff. You already have it if you have a Google account. So and that's just google.com slash keep, and I use that one quite a bit as well. The last one that I love when it comes to organizing these ideas is Trello. And if you're not using Trello for anything, then you need to sign up today because I use it for everything. I even used it to plan my wedding that I just had recently. So it's, it's just amazing. I love it. So essentially what Trello is, is you create, there's lots of ways you can do it, but essentially you get little cards and you can organize them into different lists. So, for example, if the internet was working better, I'd show you real quick, but for my blog, I have a nice Trello board, and then I have a list of ideas, and then I have a list of ideas that I'm working on, then ideas that I'm researching, ideas that I'm writing, ideas that I'm editing, and then ideas that are published. So I can look at my ideas column, and then when I go, hey, I'm going to write this one, I can drag it over to the research column. And then I have a few in the research column, and I can drag one to the writing column, I can drag it, and that way you can kind of, it's kind of organizing your tasks and your ideas in the same board sort of thing. So but you can use that for almost anything, so I highly encourage you to play around with that tool, but that's how I use it in regards to blogging. So if you don't really care for the Trello interface, and you want something a little bit more calendar-like, there's a few tools you can use that are called editorial calendars. And essentially what these calendars will do is they create a calendar for you. And you can go, hey, I'm going to create these blog posts on these days, this one I'm going to share, it, those types of things. This tool is the premium tool. The next few I'll show you are the free versions. But this one goes a step further. You can go, hey, every Thursday I'm going to do a blog post. These are, then you can schedule out when you're going to tweet about it, when you're going to Facebook post about it, when you're going to send it to Google Plus. And it'll actually do all of it for you as well. You just kind of map it out in your tool. So that's a really nice tool. I don't use this one. I use one of the free tools because I like free. But uh, this is a really nice tool for planning out and taking care of all the marketing aspects for you. So one of the free tools is the WordPress plugin, editorial calendar plugin. This is the one that I actually use. It's very simple. Uh, when you go to the post, as if you're creating a post, there's a new page that says calendar. 
And then when you go in there, you have a giant calendar. You can create posts and everything and organize them from within that calendar. Now, there's one other one, and it's the Edit Flow plugin. And they operate similarly, but there's one main difference, is that Edit Flow is better for teams. The Editorial Calendar plugin, it's great if you're the only one posting. But the Edit Flow, you can actually go in and comment, and you can assign different posts, and you can add, so if you have copy editors and multiple authors, this is the one I use. Let's so once we've gathered ideas, and we've organized them, and then we started writing them, there's a few tools you want to use to kind of help you with your writing to get the most out of it. If you're not familiar with the readability score, there, there's lots of different scores out there, so I'm not going to go into it too in depth. But essentially, the score with read, readability is how well and what level people need to be at to be able to read your posts. So it's recommended when you're writing to mass audiences that your post should be able to be read by eighth or ninth graders. That's the, that's the concept, because that's just where the mass market is. So what the readability scores do is grades it and tells you where you're sitting at within those different levels. If you have a more technical audience, then maybe you want to aim for a higher level. And maybe if you have a different audience, you might want to aim for a lower level. So you want to know where your level's at, but then use certain tools to tell you where your posts are falling so you're in that level. <coughs> so this one's a nice, easy tool. You just kind of copy and paste your post in. It does it, and you're done. It's one purpose tool. I love those. So I'll get to one just saying that I personally use, but I'm going to show you a couple of different ones that you can use. Readability score is one, and the other one purpose tool is the readability test tool. And they do the same thing, you copy your post, you paste it in, it'll tell you what level it's at. This next tool though is one that I personally use. I wish that image, the image is amazing. So this tool was, but once I learned about it, I don't write a post about it. Because essentially, it not only grades your stuff, so you, I'll post it in and says, hey, rank your ninth grade reading level, this is perfect. But it'll also analyze your writing and say, hey, Frank, this sentence is confusing to read. This paragraph has too many adverbs. This paragraph has three sentences that are a little confusing. You might want to rewrite it. It'll analyze your writing for you, and then even color code it. Like, this sentence is colored purple, and this, all the purple sentences are hard to read. All the green words you can probably replace with something to make it easier to read. It just color codes your entire post. So this one's a free tool. I use it now for every single post I write. Because it, it just does all this cool stuff, and I love it. I'm sorry? I have not. Is it similar to that? Uh, yeah, but it also works for duplicate on the web. It does uh, spelling and. Is it a free tool? Uh, <coughs> it's online. You copy and paste in it, mm -hmm. and uh, it asks you what your uh, level is, whether you're in high school, college. And, and what was the name of that? Yeah, paper grader. Paper Rater. I'll have to look at that one. Thank you for sure. Was it Rater or Rater? Rater, right? Rater. R A T E R. So the next one, hopefully, most of you have some sort of SEO plugin installed on your website. This is the one that I recommend is Yoast SEO. But if you do not have this one, another one that I love to use is also All in One SEO Pack. All in One SEO Pack has been around longer. The reason why I recommend Yoast SEO to newer WordPress users because it has a nice color code system. So you can glance at it and show you these three are green, they're good, these four are red and they're bad. So essentially, I'll go through my post once I write it, and I'll find like a good snippet of information, like a statistic that I researched, or a line that I think, oh, that's going to sell really well, because people are going to like this line, and then I use the short code from this, and I just kind of wrap it around it. So as people scroll down their posts, they're going to see this nice little white box that has this quote already pre-formatted, and it just says, click to share this. And they click it, and it automatically has all the words for them in their tweet box, and they just have to hit the share button. They don't have to think about typing stuff, they don't have to figure out. It's one click for them, which makes it much more likely they're going to share your post. And it already has this nice snippet, and it kind of stands out, and it attracts their attention, more than just a share button somewhere on your website. So I use it pretty much on every post since I found it. Now the next one is revive old posts. Once you've been blogging for a while, you're going to have a lot of posts on your website. One of my sites, I'm at like 150 posts. But once you've written, once you've written one, you've marked it a little bit, you have more important things to do than really remember to go back and reshare some of those posts. Because depending on what your audience is, some of your posts from a year ago or two years ago might still be relevant. For example, the post I did on productivity, that's going to be relevant for a while. Like that's 
people like to be productive. So what you what this plugin does is it will measure, oh, this plugin's been around, or this post has been around for six months or a year. Let's go ahead and reshare this out to your audience. And that way, you can get more people, maybe your new audience members, your new followers, who have not seen that post before, they're going to see it now because this plugin is resharing it with your audience. There's a few different settings. Some of them allow automatic, some of them do not. So you just have to kind of see what works with you. You're welcome. Now there's a variety of tools when it comes to actually tweeting or posting or anything like that. My personal favorite is Hootsuite. They're, a competitor to them is Buffer. And then there's one last one that's called Social Oomph. I don't know how many O's, there's like 10 O's in that one, so I have no idea how many O's are in that one. But Buffer and Hootsuite are the main two. Essentially what these can do, one, you can integrate all of your services in this one app. So when I log in here, I have, so I own a lot of brands. So when I go in here, I have seven Facebook accounts synced to it. I have 11 Twitter accounts, four LinkedIn accounts, and seven Google Plus accounts. But they're all in this one app. So I can go, oh, hey, I'm going to go to this brand today, see all of its accounts. I can create a post that goes through all four of its social medias. And then I can go to this other account, and it goes out to the three social medias, all from within the one app. What's even better is that you can schedule posts in the future. So when I write a post, for example, I wrote a post earlier this morning, and I put it out. I'll go to Hootsuite, and I'll post right now to all my social media. Then I'll schedule one in an hour for Twitter, and then one in three hours for Twitter. And then I'll schedule one in all the media in a few days. And I can use this one app to do all of it for me. And I'll schedule, and I'll take care of all the marketing for me. So I use that one all the time. The other competitor is Buffer. They work very similar. They have slightly different workflows. So I suggest trying both of them to see what kind of works better for you. But definitely have one of them. Hootsuite is free up into, I want to say, three accounts, which is not bad. I'm a little past that, so I didn't, but most of the time, for most people with one website, you might be on the free account forever. So that's always a fun one. Buffer, I want to say, also has a free tier, but I don't know what their limit is. ConvertKit. So if you saw the image here, that'd be amazing, but when it comes to blogging and website, one of the most useful tools in your repertoire is an email list. Because a lot of people, they come to your website and they like your stuff. Hopefully. Hopefully they love your stuff. But what's going to get them back to your website? If they see your website, wow, that's a cool thing. They might bookmark it. I don't use bookmarks anymore. I hardly ever go back to my bookmarks. And people, they might see it again on Twitter, but you want to have them coming back to your website. You want to build that, that repertoire with them. You want to actually hey, be like, hey, come on back. Let's read these new posts. An email list is how you do that. So the email service that I recommend is ConvertKit because it's built for bloggers. Like even their website, it's, oh, email marketing for bloggers. It has all these cool tools geared towards WordPress users. So they do not have a free plan. So that, that is a downside. So if you're looking for absolutely free, MailChimp has the free plan. It's nice. It's not as powerful. It doesn't have all these cool tools like ConvertKit, ConvertKit does. But MailChimp's a good alternative if you're looking to really keep everything free for right now. But having that email list is pretty critical when you're trying to really grow your blog and keep it moving forward. Yes. Oh, how much time do I have? You can do that on almost, almost any email service uh, using the RSS feeds that WordPress. Uh, if, if you're not experienced with email marketing, it's a good first step. Because you want to have those email communications so people come back to your post. However, in my experience, it's good to take that extra step and create the email yourself. Because it gets that personal feeling. Because if I'm reading emails, and then every day I, or every, whenever you send it out, I get an email and it looks like a blog post that was just sent out. I'm like, well, I might read that later. I might... But when, you, when I get email going, hey, Frank, this is a cool post I just wrote about seven productivity tips. This is the first one I talked about. And if you want to catch the rest of them, click here to read the rest of them. So here, I'm already captured. I already read that first tip. And then it sounds like you're addressing me personally. I'm like, hey, I want to, I'm going to help this guy out. I want to go read this post. I want to see what the other six tips are. Whereas the RSS feed is only going to say four tips. So in my experience, it's better to take that next step. But RSS feeds are a good first step. If that's the first step you're taking, I would say start with that, yes. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I, for your audience or for you? So you're looking for if the user is kind of on their website, they hit the button, you want to predefine what that text is sort of thing? For your user, as they scroll through, they won't click on it. I don't use a tool that has does all that automatically. Um, the sharing tool I use is Monarch by Elegant Themes, but it does not have that capability. So I don't, I don't think I know of one that would have that step of automation in it. Does anyone use a Facebook tool sharing that might have that sort of? No. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for you, but I, it's not one I've come across. Mm-hmm. I, I would say the best is for you as the author to go and post on it, and then the users let them word it however they need to, because I don't know of an automation tool that would let them customize it. All right, and she said we're about out of time, so I think that's actually, yes, that is my last one. So if you have any feedback for this talk, I would love to hear about it. You just have to tweet to me at FB Corso and let me know if you thought there's any tools that you liked. I would love to hear about it. I have the PDF created for you at my website, frankcorso.me slash toolkit. You just have to type in your email and I'll send it right to you so you can have it to keep. So if you're interested in getting that, that is how you would get that. Do they have on the website a spot that we're going to have slides or links like that that I could? Oh. Well, that was perfect timing with that. Yes. It depends on your workflow. That's why I listed most of them. For me, I like to do almost everything in Trello. I don't usually use Evernote's nice because you can quickly, because there's like an extension and bookmarking system in all your browsers and phones that so you can quickly add images to and websites. Whereas Trello, you have to actually either copy the image and upload it. So Evernote seems to be a little quicker to get things done. Yeah, usually how I use it is that I use Evernote for quickly getting stuff in and then I en end up usually moving it to Twitter, or Trello, Trello, sorry, to Trello, and then using it as a task management within Trello. But everyone's a little different, so you just have to find the workflow that works best for you. And having the workflow is the important step there. Any other questions about tools? Any specific tools that you're after? We have a couple minutes left. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you are you uploading to YouTube or are you looking for a spot to Okay. Mm -hmm. Hootsuite and Buffer both allow you to send out the videos. So that would be a good first step. And and then the next step that I love to use personally is my email list. I take a picture of the first frame of the video and then send it out to email list with a picture with a nice little play button so it looks like the video is in their email to entice them to click it and then it goes to the YouTube page. Yeah, I have a really good conversion of that technique. So that's what I use. I'm sorry? What is Jane? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's sort of like a script. Yeah, there's a variety of them out there. So that's not the one that I use, but yeah, that definitely would be a good. Hmm. All right, well, that's all the time. Uh, Jing, J-I-N-G. All right, and that's all the time we have. Thank you so much, guys. You have a great day.